Hey everyone, Levi here with Trident Fly Fishing and today we're going to be tying a full dress Clouser minnow. This is sort of my take on the Clouser. It has a little extra action to it. Just looks a little more realistic in my opinion. Not to say that the standard Clouser isn't worth having because it's a excellent, excellent fly and I've caught a bunch of fish on it. But this is just a little more uh, involved than that fly. So if you want to challenge yourself or put something different in your box, this is a great fly to do so with. We're gonna run some Unimono on our hook, and for a hook, we're using a Tiemco 811S, size one aught, but you can tie this fly smaller and definitely larger. So get yourself a base laid down, and we're gonna bring our thread about an eye's length behind that eye. And we're gonna move in here with some double pupil lead eyes. This is a color chartreuse. It will accent our overall fly quite well, but you can use any color that you like. Get that wrapped in with some figure eight wraps on either side. And we'll hit it with some helicopter wraps as well to really bind that in. And then just to be additionally dura durable, go in there with some super glue and lock that in and while our glue's drying we're going to move into a white bucktail we want nicely long fibers for this one odd hook but this is a fly that you can tie in almost any size so peel yourself off a bit you don't need a whole lot in fact i like this fly to kind of be on the sparse side of things but to each their own in terms of that Clip that right by the hide, and we'll get rid of any short fibers that don't contribute to our profile. And make sure we have a nice natural taper here, which we do. We want this to flow into our tail. Get that, probably best to clip those butt ends nice and flush. From there, we're gonna tie it in right on top of that hook shank and just behind the eye. And advance your thread behind those eyes. And now we'll lock this in on the shank. Gives us a nice tail. I'm gonna wind my thread up and back once more one more time, just to really get that tightly on there. I'm gonna clean up these stray fibers too, just cause they're kind of bothering me. We're gonna move into some flat diamond braid for the body. This is sort of an enhancement on the regular clouser. I like the way it looks. And it also just adds durability to the whole fly. Kind of a win-win in my book. This is a real solid pattern for the striped bass up here in Maine. So just like I always do, I'm gonna hit that with a loose wrap and then just pull it with my left hand until I'm happy with its position so I don't have to get too crazy with it. So lock that in and advance your thread just behind those eyes. And we're gonna build a nice clean body here, side by side wraps. This will add durability and also a nice flashy belly to your fly. And all the materials that we're using today can be found at tridentflyfishing.com. And orders over 49 bucks do ship for free. So get on there and get everything you need for this fly as well as pretty much any other fly you're tying. So once you get that just behind the eyes, we're gonna lock it in with a few securing wraps and clip off the excess. All right, so now I'm gonna invert my hook. The rotary function on the vise is very helpful for that clean up those stray fibers before we move into some ostrich hurl. This is chartreuse. We're gonna accent our fly nicely. And this is sort of the main thing that's different between this fly and the standard clouser. We're gonna grab a nice bunch, probably eight to 10 fibers, maybe more, and clip them off right at the base. And we want these to extend beyond our white bucktail. Reason for this is it gives a really nice flutter whenever these lead eyes drop your fly. And 
I've found that that is incredibly effective and it just adds movement. This is one of those flies that kind of unlike the standard clouser that whenever you just let it sit there, it's going to have some motion to it and give the illusion of life and get that tied in just behind the hook eye. And now you're going to need to, oh, we lost one. Now you're going to snake that over the hook and really lock it in. Now we'll move in here with some polar flash. It's a sea foam color. It's going to accent everything nicely. And clip yourself off four strands or so. Measure it out on either side. Hit it with a securing wrap. And then just fold it right over. And that'll give you solid flash right down the middle of your fly. I'm going to clip that out of the way because it's bugging me. We're going to move into this pale olive bucktail and this is a fly that you can tie in any variety of colors i just like this color selection because it imitates things like sand eels and silver sides which are quite prevalent up here in maine so get yourself a nice chunk we're going to top it off with some darker olives so don't get too crazy with the amount of fibers on there pull those out and Clip them at the base. You can clear out any shorts. And we're gonna measure that. We want it to be about as long as our white. And clip that flush just to make your life easier. Tie it in right on top. I can tell these butts are gonna be problematic, so I'm gonna trim them at a little bit of an angle and lock it all in pull those through the hook actually let me get all of that seated nicely there we go sometimes that's easier if you take it out of the vise now we're going to top this off with some dark olive bucktail this is going to give a sort of nice dark color to the back of this fly. Don't need a whole lot of fibers, but I just like the way that this accents the lighter contrasting olive. Measure that to be just a little shorter than that lighter olive so that it adds taper to the fly. And get that tied in right on top of that pale olive. Distribute it with your thumb if need be. And we're gonna lock everything in now. That one fiber, there we go. Go ahead and whip finish it off right now. That is a full dress clouser. I wanna thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.